What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are checking out Hermitcraft Season 9 which if you haven't seen already started over the weekend on Saturday. Most of the Hermits released their episodes on Saturday, some released on Sunday, and we even had one or two that are releasing today. So some people may not be included in this video just because they haven't released an episode yet or even built a starter house yet. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like on it, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. We just do these videos to show off everybody's bases because it can be very difficult to keep track of absolutely everybody on the Hermitcraft server, and it's nice to have a place where you can see what everybody on the server is doing just in one video. So first up today, we are checking out B-Dubs who has built a monolith. This thing is absolutely massive, built mostly out of diorite. It's just a huge white tower with mini floors for him to put all his storage, things like that inside of it. And he did an amazing job of decorating it, making it look kind of futuristic. It's also got a lot of moss and leaves on the outside to give it kind of an overgrown look. I think this thing looks really, really cool. And I love that he made diorite look great. Next up, we are checking out Vintage Beef, and Vintage Beef has built just a little tiny home in the side of a hill to start off, and he worked mostly on getting an automatic wool farm set up. This little hillside base is only temporary, but he has a major project where he's going to need lots and lots of wool, so he decided the first thing he should do in this world is really get this automatic wool farm set up and he just used a very simple method of dispensers with shears and also the observers to check the grass and just set it all up with every color of wool. I'm definitely excited to see what exactly this project is going to be needing all this wool right from the start of the season so hopefully we figure out what exactly his plans are very soon. Next up, we've got Cubfan and Rindog who are working on a little area together right now on this side of the river, known as the side of the river where the cool kids hang out. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, we don't have a episode from Rindog yet. We only have Cubfan's episode, and we didn't actually see a starter base go up, but they did get a little chicken farm set up and got some other animals and farms going. Next up, Doc M got some things going over on his base. He didn't really make a starter base, but actually made a bunch of starter farms. He already has a villager trading hall set up, an iron farm, and a villager breeder. He's moving through this very, very quickly, trying to get a lot of things set up very early. Now, unfortunately, most of the game-breaking things that Doc did in the last season have been patched, so it's completely impossible to do any game-breaking things this season, right? I guess we'll find out later in this season. But so far Doc M has gotten all these farms set up and in his first episode even went into the nether and set up a fully functional gold farm. Hermitcraft is definitely one of the fastest moving Minecraft groups out there. Episode 1 and we already have villager trading halls, gold farms, and so much more on this server. Next up, False Symmetry has begun working on her base as well, and her base is definitely one of the most impressive ones for episode 1 of this server. False Symmetry went ahead and custom terraformed a small mountain right here, and also a tree that's kind of formed with it, and then off that tree branch she went ahead and landed her eagle from season 8 right onto the server to serve as a starter base for this season. I really can't think of anything more unique or cool than living inside of an eagle as your starter base in Minecraft, so this is definitely a great build from False Symmetry. Next up, Gemini Tay is of course working on a starter tree, and she went ahead and just grew one out of bone meal for her herself to live in. Of course, just the base tree doesn't exactly look that great or have enough room for a starter base inside of it, so she went ahead and made a cave below it, and then even built some buildings and glass windows up in the treetops to give herself a bit more room for her storage bed and so on. This build really turned out pretty magnificent. She added so many small details throughout this whole thing, even the land beneath it to make it really cool, added in some leaves hanging off, some extra branches, things like that, and made this base look wonderful. Next up, Green has decided instead of actually living in a starter base, he's decided to just live inside of his first shop. And this first shop is a giant boulder, which he calls the Entity. Now, while at the beginning of this season it may just look like a boulder, which 
It is just a boulder. It does have a heart of the sea inside of it, which is very cool as it gives it a living feature. And he's actually going to expand this later on, adding different materials of whatever he puts in this shop. So if he's going to sell copper, he's going to add a whole copper section onto this shop. And I think that this could actually turn into a very cool build. He's also going to get pretty much right into the mega base build this season, although we still really don't know what that is, but for now he's just going to be living inside of the entity. Next up, iJevin has started this season off very strong with a really cool kind of medieval house build. That is really the only way I can describe it, but I think this thing looks amazing. I like the little tower that he's added in. He's got some farms, some stables around it, and he's even done some pathways, things like that leading up to it, which make this whole thing look very nice. It's got a lot of details on the outside, which look really cool. A lot of planters boxes. Uh, he's got some trapdoors, some composters, things like that to add in some details. And then of course, a big mix of deep slates and stones to give this thing a really cool look. Next up, Impulse has made a giant house for his starter base and it seems pretty expensive as well. This thing features a lot of redstone lamps, a lot of wood, uh, and then also a lot of amethyst for the roof section of this build. So definitely some pretty hard items to get in early game Minecraft, but hermit crafters really go all the way for their builds. I'd say my favorite portion of this house is the back porch that he made here. This thing looks very, very cool. It's got some storage and then also looks super nice and kind of breaks up the flat shape that it had beforehand. Next up, Iskal has been working on a base built into the side of this mountain here. This is the original build for it. He added in some moss on this section and then added in some stairs along the mountain, a mine shaft, and so much more. His whole plan for a base this season is an Omega Cave, so I'm really excited to see that. Iskal is such a great builder and it's great to have him back on Hermitcraft since he took a lot of time off last season to finish up Vault Hunters and then start working on that series. Now he is going to be continuing Vault Hunters but he's going to be doing a lot of work on Hermitcraft, so I'm super excited for this season. Now, I personally love bases that are cut into the side of a mountain, and this one is no exception. He's got the mine shaft down below, a small farm in the middle, and then his storage section up top, so this is a really cool looking mountain base. Next up, Joe Hills didn't really work on a starter base for himself, but he worked on a whole community area to help get hermits set up in case they die or need some early game materials which he's found before them. He went ahead and set up a small little outpost with some furnaces and a chest that held a bunch of different tools, some torches, things like that to help out some hermits. And then he went ahead and set up a community garden, which is a massive farm that can collect a bunch of different materials such as wheat, potatoes, carrots, beetroots, and so much more. Definitely a super helpful way for some of the hermits to get set up, especially ones like Scar that keep being killed by their friends Mumbo and Grian. Next up, Corrales has started this season off very strong with a huge modern house design in the side of this mountain right here. Now this thing is actually pretty big and it's kind of a modern cabin theme. It's got some really cool design features to it which I think he got a lot from his Patreon server. Uh, there's The windows are formed out of different trapdoor sections which really add a unique element to this build and make it look like something that doesn't even fit in Minecraft. It's really a very, very cool build. Now he of course has a lot of work to do on the interior of this base still, but the whole exterior of this thing is built up and ready to be filled with all of his different storage and everything else he wants to build this season. Next up, Mumbo Jumbo has started off this season with a vault. He set out to become the richest hermit this season, and I'm really excited to see what exactly Mumbo does to become the richest. He's already started off with making a lot of deals, especially with Tango and a beehive to get some extra iron, but this vault we are never going to see the inside of or how to get into it, and there's actually going to be a lot of these vaults. Uh, up these stairs is where his actual starter base is. It's just a small 2x2 little hut for him to live in, and all his valuables will actually be stored in the vault. Now this is going to be super interesting to see throughout the season how exactly Mumbo hides all of this from us, and when exactly he will eventually tell us if that's the final episode, or if we have to wait until the world download to see how much diamonds he has inside of the vault. Next up, Perlescent Moon has started this season off strong as well with a beautiful starter house. This starter house, although great on the outside, probably has one of my favorite interiors so far on the season. 
Now this house contains a lot of different blocks and features that make it look really nice. I think the copper deep slate and then also uh, the nether trees look very great together. A lot of different colors all combined together to make this lovely, lovely house. And as I said before, this is definitely my favorite interior so far in the season. Although a lot of them haven't been completed, this one just looks so cool with all the colors and then how she organized the different storage areas and parts of this house. There is also a second floor to this build, although she hasn't done anything up there yet, but there is some more room for her to add some extra storage or whatever she needs before her next builds. Now, Scar started off this season with a ton of deaths, mostly due to Mumbo and Grian, but also some due to himself like trying to set his spawn in the nether. But eventually he got exactly what he wanted, which was a netherite hoe, so that he could collect so many leaves to build this massive tree starter house. Now for a lot of people this starter house is actually a mega base, but for Scar this is just a small starter house for him because he is an insane builder and puts so much time into Hermitcraft. This is really such a beautiful custom tree design that he's had here. It's got so many different details. The leaves especially look amazing. You can see as he zooms in here, all the different slabs and fin fence posts, things like that to add in some details to this build. It's really a great build and a great starter house for Scar. And I'm very glad that Scar is back on the season and feeling well again. Now, hopefully he doesn't blow this base up too quickly because it's already got some creepers on the inside of it. Next up, Stress Monster has started off with a very unique base, actually building a ball thingy or then maybe a teapot. This base actually is very cool, very unique, something I've never seen before. It's got a very cool gradient to it with some stripped oak logs and then some birch logs on top and I think it looks very, very cool. It's definitely a very unique base, but it serves its purpose. It's got plenty of room on the inside for some storage, her bed of course, and some furnaces, so definitely a great little starter base for this season. Last season, unfortunately, she had to take some time off from the actual server, but hopefully we get to see a lot of very cool builds from Stress Monsters this season. Next up, Tango Tech has started off with a very cool base. This one is built up in the air, supported by these kind of tree-like deep slate builds underneath. This thing looks so cool, it looks like a very haunted house, which is of course perfectly in season as it is only 5 months away from Halloween. But this thing looks very cool, he did a really cool job on the windows using the honey blocks to make it look like there's light emitting from the inside. There's also this fungus and the torches hanging off with, which adds so many cool details to this thing. It's definitely a very cool starter base. Now Tango is actually going on vacation for a little while, so he's went ahead and recorded the first three episodes of this series already, which means he put in a ton of work in the first week of the Hermitcraft server. This was just the first episode and episode 2 from Tango is already out so if you love this build and haven't checked Tango out before, go check out Tango's second episode and see what he's got going on there. But this thing is so cool looking and I really really like the design that he went with. Don't know how he got inspired to do all of this but I love seeing all the creative work from the Hermitcraft members. Next up, TFC has got this season started off as well. He's got a small farm built on the side of the river here and then went ahead and built a little birch house on the side of the river as well. Probably the best part of this base though is the little sign he put on the front which was TFC's ugliest sin starter houselet thingy. Definitely a great name for this little houselet on the side of the river with his farm. Next up, X has started off this season with a huge beautiful house as well. This one is built a lot out of different stripped logs to give it a small gradient at the bottom with the oak and the birch, then added in some sandstone and things like that to give it a few different colors. This really reminds me a lot of Joe Hill's and Zombie Cleo's castle from last season uh, with that sort of gradient that he has right there. And I think Pearlescent Moon now knows exactly who went ahead and mined out all the warped uh, wood in the nether because this is where all the warped wood ended up going. Definitely a very cool looking starter base for X though. Next up, Zadaf is off to a very interesting season. He is going to try to collect as many trophies as he can this season. He went ahead and got a lot of the achievements that you can get in the early game Minecraft and then went ahead and built up a small boulder for his starter base. 
I gotta say, Zadaf's first episode of Hermitcraft might have been my favorite episode of season 9 so far. It was super fun to watch and super fun to see exactly how he plans to go about this season. And if you haven't watched his episode yet, here's a little teaser at what he's getting into this season. I won't show any more than that, but you'll have to go and check out his episode to see what exactly he went ahead and did. Next up, and last but not least, we have Wells Knight with a huge beautiful starter house as well. This one is built a lot out of sandstone and then spruce and oak, and he went ahead and made a central tower in the middle and some different sections for floors to make this thing look very cool. I really like the shape of this house and how he built up the tower in the center to kind of break up the shape and then also this front section. I think it looks very nice. The windows all look really cool and it has an amazing block palette as well. That is pretty much all that we have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, of course there are some missing members of Hermitcraft here. XB Crafted is taking his season uh, a bit slow, so his first episode was mostly just him mining and enjoying uh, his time with the other hermits, which I absolutely loved. Uh, Etho is unfortunately having some family issues where he's taking some time off from the server, but hopefully we get to see him back on the server very soon. And of course, at the time of recording this, Rindog had still not uploaded, so we don't get to see his pie shop and whatever else he has built so far on the server. That is pretty much all that we have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like on it, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. We also have a Discord server which just started up in the last couple weeks, and it already has a bunch of members all showing off their very cool builds and so much more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.